if I had never seen him do magic, he'd be the most remarkable person I ever met. He just had this amazing breadth of, of knowledge and interest. He was a remarkable observer. And his life ran the span of the century. I mean, this is a, a fellow who uh, saw Scott Joplin play the piano and was at a concert of Blind Tom, uh, the fellow who had savant syndrome, more commonly called an idiot savant, who could perfectly duplicate any sound played on the piano when he'd only heard it once and yet was barely capable of, uh, of uh, expressing a, a thought or completing a sentence. He uh, spent time with Damon Runyon and Teddy Roosevelt and Orson Welles and Billy Rose. And he was at the Scopes trial, uh, the famous monkey trial. Um, you know, he got himself a job cutting silhouettes in a nearby town and then would come over every day to, uh, to go to the trial. Uh, oh, silhouette cutting. I mean, he probably was the greatest silhouette cutter of his day, doing people's portraits. That's how he financed his... Um, financed his, uh, himself for, for many years. He, he was a fairly reluctant performer, and, and so what he really wanted to do, it seemed to me, was to basically sit in a room and think about sleight of hand. And one of the ways that he made money was, uh, was by cutting silhouettes, and there are other people who I know interested in that art who tell me that, that they actually believe he probably was the best silhouette cutter of his time. One of the, the new kinds of ways in which he would approach card magic would be to do something like this. Uh, he would give someone a deck of cards, and he would go into, uh, he would tell that person to go into another room and just open the deck uh, for a second and look at a card and remember that, and then bring the deck of cards back to him and hand him the cards. And he would uh, look at them for a few minutes and look at the cards and, uh, and hand them the card that they had been thinking of. Actually, the whole concept of thinking of cards rather than selecting cards, for getting away from the stock phrase of take a card, any card, to a much more important uh, concept, which was simply to think about cards, was one of the great contributions that he made. One of the really great days I remember was uh, Steve Freeman threw a surprise birthday party for me on my 30th birthday. And both Charlie and Vernon were there. I mean, what, what an amazing thing. And I, I remember Charlie fooling me with a very esoteric piece of card magic, just completely. I, and, 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 and Vernon looked on really well. And then the conversation turned to martial arts. And um, Vernon was sitting in a chair. I mean, he was an old man. And suddenly he fell to the ground, and Steve ran over to try to help him. And in about a second, Steve was flat on his back. And Vernon had thrown him using some leg technique. And he said, they had that when I was a kid, you know? I mean, it was just great. Vernon's chops at the end certainly couldn't have been as great as they were earlier in his career. But they were surprisingly, surprisingly good with him well into his 90s. You know, he he uh, would occasionally, you know, miss a move or drop a card. But he still was thinking really clearly and often doing something beautifully, uh, um, you know, like the diagonal palm shift from Erdene's. Uh, I saw him do, uh, you know, well into his 90s, uh, just as beautifully as I could imagine it ever being done.